Good morning, everybody. This is Lindsey Hulse from SPS back in the building for another SPS Monday Motivation. Hope you guys had a great Mother's Day weekend. Uh, I sure did. Got to spend time with my mother uh, yesterday. It was so cool. Uh, caught her by surprise. The smile on her face was priceless. And I'm grateful to still have my mother that I can share with on a regular basis. All of you that do, I know you appreciate it. And those who no longer have your mother physically here with you, I know you appreciate it as well. Uh, I had a great weekend uh, on uh, Saturday. Uh, my daughter and I stopped by and saw my guy, Vern Richards, and his lovely family over at Juice Nation. They had special guests and close, close family friend Steve Smith in the building. And we got a chance to sit down a little bit. If you check it out, uh, you'll be able to see that on um, my Facebook, my SPS Edge YouTube page. Or, or the like, and um, great, great conversation. And of course, Steve is a very accomplished uh, basketball player, a very accomplished uh, color commentator uh, with NBA basketball. And uh, along the many people that came over to visit and get the free smoothie that Steve was providing for Juice Nation's third o location opening on Okemos Road in Jolly, you gotta get over there, beautiful spot. And um, you got to see some teams come in. I got to see some basketball players. I believe uh, Moneyball was having their Moneyball weekend. So there was some young players in there. I remember seeing a group of guys taking a picture. There was one kid standing out. There was one kid that was kind of off on his own, face a little low. And I don't know what the backstory is, but it immediately made me think about culture and team culture. And uh, whether it's in sports, whether it's in business, whether, you know, it's at your job, whatever it may be. And we talk about it a lot. So the question becomes, you know, which way is your culture coming? What are you bringing to the culture? You know, which direction does it go in? And we talk about culture that includes so many things that can be, you know, uh, when you're dealing with teams, of course, but we're dealing with people of different backgrounds, you know, uh, different races, different ethnicities, different nationalities, different languages, you know, just a different community. There's so many things that go into that. And what I just find is, you know, um, I think it's a very casually used word, our culture, our culture. But you really got to break it down and talk about what it can do because culture is everything, especially if you have a group of individuals trying to move and do something. You know, we talked about uh, the comment that uh, Jim Harbaugh made just a few weeks ago when we sat down in Ann Arbor. And I asked about, you know, um, what he was so happy about. He's talked about the fact that everybody was moving in the same direction. So clearly they have a culture that's working and that showed in the championships that they won uh, for the Big Ten. Same thing with, you know, Michigan State football. Shout out to Mel Tucker uh, winning the Peach Bowl. Everyone was, you know, focused and moving in the same direction. But what about if you're in a situation where you're either trying to create a culture, you've uh, come into a culture, uh, whether it's a new job, a new role, or whatever it may be. So my point I'm trying to tell you guys is there are a lot of things that go into that. I want to share some um, research I was able to do, particularly with psychology today. Uh, I thought this was pretty good, and this is a universal statement. It says, a team culture is comprised of three essential pillars that support all team functioning and performance, and those are values, attitudes, and goals. What's the team's values? What do you guys believe in? What's your attitude about things, your approach, and what are your goals? You know, we look at NBA basketball right now. Guys who are still playing now have a goal of winning a national champion, a world championship. You know, uh, what are the goals within the organization that you work for? What are the goals within your family unit? You know, what is that going forward? Also, the state to identify and enlist team leaders to support the team culture. But you got to understand sometimes whether you're the head of the household, the head of a company, you still have to have other leaders. I remember my time in the military, um, what we had were squad leaders. So you had a person who was the guide. This was the person who was the head of, you know, the unit, so to speak. But then the squad leaders, four different squad leaders that happened to be one on several occasions, were responsible for other groups. And I think that's something people have to, one, empower people to take on leadership roles roles and to be willing to relinquish that because sometimes some people leadership style get a different kind of response and as a true leader you have to be in a position where you can be okay with others you know being successful in their leadership role and not see that as something to be intimidated by or uh you know self-sabotage because you want to get all the props and the glory that's something to keep in mind also too Provide opportunities to build a team coach. You know, what are you doing to give, you know, your team, whether it's your sports team, whether it's the team that you work with, a chance? Are you giving people an opportunity to give some feedback or is it dictatorial? Is it just one way all the time? You say, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to do it. But and sometimes there's a generation gap. Sometimes there's, you know, um, 
some type of barrier that may be going on as a leader, you have to be open and say, okay, what kind of feedback do I need to get and be ready to act on from the group? So provide an opportunity to build a team culture. And a few more things too. Create shared responsibilities within the team members uh, that have to do the work together. You know, and that's different because, you know, and many times people come up with these bright ideas and what they want to do and they want to change. And I'll give you an image right now of how that may look. You know, it may be a little complicated though. You know, you got the other parts of the, you know, process that are going on and people have to take on different roles. And you look right here, uh, you see people doing different roles. Some are a little bit more challenging than the other, but here's a better visual. I think this is more applicable to the point I'm trying to make, which is um, look at the work that's a little bit more arduous. People having to climb, people have to help others up, people have to push. I mean, that's not, you know, sexy, attractive stuff that people really want to do. But I think this is more indicative of what we are dealing with out here in society as it relates to the cultures that you build. You know, when you go through these things, people don't want to talk about the hard part, the sweat that you got to pull, you got to tug, the things you got to do that's not really fun, that's not really so-called attractive to look at and all those type of things. I got brother Kevin Marshall in the building. Good morning, brother. How are you? Thanks for checking in on this uh, Monday motivation for sure. And just talking about building a culture, man, the things that people have to go through and what you have to do. And lastly, you know, creating those team rituals. You know, what are the things that you do? Is there a pre-game meal that you guys normally do together? Are these things that your company can look forward to on a regular basis? Because whether you know it or not, people may not say it, but they look forward to that opportunity to have that interaction. Look forward to be able to have an informal uh, experience with some of their team members, whether it's at a job, whether it's, you know, uh, on a team or whatever it may be. But these are the things that are necessary going forward to create a culture. And I think that's something you got to look at. And if it comes down to, <clears throat> you know, looking for examples, look for where there's been success. You know, where where, where have people had success at? USA Basketball has had success. A Michigan University of Michigan winning, you know, the Big Ten, but also Michigan State has had success. You know, uh, these are places where culture, you know, thrives, and, and that's really important. So I won't keep you guys too long on this Monday motivation. I just really want to step in, and hopefully I can create something that can be positive for you guys to look at as you go forward with your day. Uh, you can enjoy this uh, amazingly warm weather that we have out here. And uh, you can just really enjoy yourself. Whatever it is you have going on, whatever you're trying to do, you have to ask yourself, what are you bringing to the culture? And if you can't take from what I share, you know, just think really hard. Sometimes they just need someone just to be an encourager, someone to pat somebody on the back, someone to be a positive voice, whatever it may be. You just want to be somebody who can contribute. My brother Kevin Marshall says, I love to have a group talk before season starts to help build the bonding with the players. We get deep in them talks and they see others just like them. Oh, that's really positive and productive that you say that because, you know, as a coach, you do it year after year after year. You may have your way of doing things, but you got new personalities. You got personalities that have evolved within a year's time. That kid that was a freshman, when they're a senior, now, that's a different person. So I like that idea but that's also you being open and transparent as a leader that you're willing to have these open conversations help do that building i think that needs to be done in a professional setting as well you know to be able to say hey this is what's going on and find out what's important to people someone may have a mother that's near and dear to them that's at a distance that they have to be mindful of someone may have you know a child that's going through a challenging time you know and i know everyone doesn't want to just share all their personal bills all the time but when you get an idea of what's important to other people What's the priority for another person? You know, I'm not really about going out because I have to go home and take care of X, Y, Z. You know, he's like, oh, okay. So instead of us, you know, making some funny comment about you, about not being with us at some event or always, you know, when work is done, you're gone, saying, hey, how's everything going with this? And you can still build that bond. So Kevin Marshall, brother, I appreciate you sharing that. With that being said, I'm going to wrap up today. I want to wish you guys a great day, you know, a great great week and all those other things going forward. Uh, my brother says, so true. We need it to work in space badly. Yeah, we do definitely need that. Definitely need that. So with that being said, I want to shout out the Waverly Warriors rocking them today. Uh, nothing but uh, love for the Waverly program and everything that's going on with them. Uh, I feel always it felt like a second home when I got up here uh, to Lansing along with some of the other schools that I was supporting and working with. So with that being said, see you guys next time. Peace.